Welcome to the Character Chronicles, the people show. Checking the post for Rescue Nation brought to you by X Cancer. Check them out at xcancer.com. This is my gut reaction to Purdue's close victory over Nebraska. Now, my initial thoughts are this game was wildly entertaining. Not a whole lot of defense, okay? Uh, Nebraska just wouldn't go away. Every time Purdue would go up by two scores, we'd fight back. We'd fight back. We just couldn't quite take over and get that lead and get in front, but we just wouldn't go away, okay, and just kept it interesting the entire game. Trey, Trey Palmer's a beast, straight up, straight up beast. Our defense struggled mightily, okay, we were without our leading tackler in Luke Reimer, okay, and uh, the offensive line consistent, cons continues to be our most consistent glaring weakness on the team, and to me, it's the biggest thing that is holding the team back as a whole consistently um, week after week. We've got to address this. We've got to improve this. We got to buy week. We got to get better. We're taking on Illinois, who's, who's six and frickin' one and ranked in the top of the Big Ten West along with Purdue. Who would have predicted that before the season started? All right, if you watch the game, Aiden O'Connell, beast. Quarter, uh, Purdue's quarterback. Now, coming into the game, he was completing 67% of his passes, and he thought that was low. Like, he felt like that was a low percentage, average, averaging 312 passing yards per game, which is first in the Big Ten. And this was his 21st career start. This is a guy with a lot of experience. Now, I love this story because he was a, a walk-on. He was eight string, eighth on the depth chart. I don't know if there's an eight, eight string, but I love that story, working his way up. Now, right off the bat, Malcolm Hartsog, true freshman, gets an INT. Now, here's why I love bringing this guy up, because this is a guy that would have never had an opportunity otherwise. And you know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm referring to. So I love that he's getting an opportunity. He's learning, he's growing, and he's making some plays too. Now, at the end of the first quarter, all right, Nebraska's down 10 to 0. I'm like, oh, they're just, there's like, I don't know, a few seconds left. Just going to run the clock out, get to the second quarter, just let the clock run. No, no, no. We hurry up, make a big play. We end up getting a touchdown, okay? Uh, deep ball to Oliver Martin. The longest catch of his career, by the way, which led to a Jacques Yant touchdown. It, it, he's become our short yardage goal line guy, if you haven't noticed. I'm glad to see him getting in the game some way, shape, or form, and his skills being utilized some way, shape, or form. Hopefully, he can be more of a complete back, but at least he's getting in short yardage goal line. Okay, special teams, block punt. Now, I couldn't tell if our punt later on was blocked or partially blocked. The TV angle wasn't great, and they didn't replay the down. I, I'm sure I'll see it when I watch the film. But I know that we have blocked two punts in three games. Somebody let me know when the last time that has happened. I can do my job and go look it up myself. Or you can leave it in the comments below and just let me know and save me some time because I'd appreciate that. It's almost like special teams have become a strength of this team. It's kind of crazy. All right, again, I mentioned that Luke Reimer was out. Also, a starting offensive lineman, Brock Bando, who had started all six games so far this year, was out. Now, I, Bryce Benhart, I believe he got some reps at right guard. Hunter Anthony started a tackle. Okay, Purdue has started three different right tackles this year. We got to find somebody who can play right tackle. Bryce Benhart, he went back into right tackle later on in the game. Why? Because Hunter Anthony was struggling mightily. So was our left tackle. Hunter Anthony doesn't move great, okay? I felt like he moved better last year at Oklahoma uh, State when he played there. Bryce Benhart doesn't have great feet. They finally moved him to guard, which I've been talking about for months, but then they had to move him out because Hunter was starting. Can we find somebody who will play right tackle? I mean, please. That has to be a priority this offseason. Recruiting, transfer portal, we need immediate help. We got the rest of the season. We got to try to address it. Okay, I'm going to be honest with you. You know, as a former D lineman, when I'd watch O lines on film, I'd get excited. Like, these guys aren't good, or they are good, or whatever the case may be. I, I mean, I, I'm not what I used to be. I'm not going to pretend that I am. Uh, but I would love to play versus this offensive line and these offensive tackles. I'm just saying. Now, here are some of the stats from the game. All right, and the first downs are a little skewed because we had a lot of big plays, so it's a little misleading, but Purdue had 38 first downs. We had 15, okay? We, they, they definitely were much more effective on third downs. They converted 50% converted of their third downs, 9 of 18. We converted 33%, 3 of 9 of our third down at conversion attempts. We had 476 total yards. They had 608 total yards. All right. We only ran the ball 23 times. And when I put it out on Facebook and Twitter, why don't we run the ball more? I know it didn't look great, 
okay and people responded accordingly, but we average, actually averaged 5.3 yards per carry. I was surprised it was that high myself, not going to lie. Uh, but we actually averaged 5.3 yards per carry, but we only rushed it 23 times. Purdue, on the other hand, a team that would much rather throw the ball, ran it 47 times for 217 rush yards this game. And we're dead last at defending the run. All right, time of possession. Again, skewed because our big plays, but this was a little astounding. All right, we had the ball for 17 minutes and 18 seconds. They had the ball for 42 minutes and 42 seconds. Uh, wow. But again, we had a lot of big plays, so on and so forth. I mentioned that now. Halftime. We're down 27-13. In the back of my mind, I'm like, we are a second half team. How are we going to respond? Let's see these adjustments. Let's see how we do. All right. Now we scored on the opening drive of the second half, went right down, made it 27-20. We stopped, okay, Purdue on their opening drive of the second half. I'm like, all right, we made some adjustments. Here we go. Now, I do want to mention, it was a long touchdown pass to Trey Palmer. Okay, that made it 27 to 20. This is an astounding stat. He has nine catches of 30 yards or more that leads the Big Ten. And I'm going to have to double check this, but I think he had four tonight. I think it was either four or more, but I'm pretty sure it was four, uh, four catches of 30 or more yards tonight, which is why I think some people were like, let's throw the ball more. Uh, I love Casey Thompson. He's a little bit up and down, though. He, he looks great, and then he doesn't. So he's a little bit up and down. In his defense, he's running for his life half the time. All right, now, our kicker, Timmy Bleakrow, had only kicked kick three three field goals all year. All right, he was three for three tonight, and, and I include this because my son, it kept us in the game, but my son was, uh, Jacob, and I quote, he says, and I quote, I'm glad we have a kicker now, end quote. When he, when he said that, I'm like, I got I to gotta tweet that and put that on Facebook. All right, um, defensively, we got to get a better pass rush. We, it can't be up and down. One week we're good, one week we're not. It's got to be consistent week after week after week. And there were a lot of times Bush was dropping eight guys and only rushing three in certain situations. But we had plenty of opportunities in other situations where we had four or more guys come. we got to have a more consistent pass rush week after week. It can't be so up and down. We need to continue working on tackling. Okay, but the one thing I will say, like, when I hearken back to the first four games that I choose to ignore before the bye week, but I'm going to hearken for two seconds here, when we'd miss a tackle, the guy would be gone for a 50-yard touchdown run. Remember those games? Because I do. All of a sudden, now we miss a tackle, there's more guys coming. There's a pursuit. There's gang tackling mentality. All of a sudden, a missed tackle doesn't turn into a 50-yard touchdown run. It turns into 15 yards or 10 yards or 20, or it's not an automatic touchdown. So that's better, but we, we did not play well on defense. We are aware of that. Aiden O'Connell's a stud at quarterback. Give him props. Okay. But we've got to get after the quarterback. We've got to continue to get better at tackling. All right, we, the defense would, did not have a great performance tonight. I think we all know that. Um, all right. Like I said, the Huskers just wouldn't go away. It was like every time you felt like Purdue was going to pull away, it was 27-13, we made it 27-20. They go up 34-20, we come back 34-23. We miss the wide open receiver in the end zone. But then we make it 34-30. And then they go up 43-30. And then we're, we bring it back to 43-37. We just couldn't get the stop on fourth and one, unfortunately. All right. Again, wildly entertaining. We just wouldn't go away. Trey Palmer is a beast. Defense struggled mightily tonight. O-line continues to be our most consistent glaring weakness. Here's my question for you fine folks at home. Okay. Are you more pleased that Nebraska kept fighting? Or are you more frustrated by the loss? All right. Also... Can the O-line be fixed? Can it just be improved? Okay, as this season goes along. Because everything else looks better, at least at times, in some way, shape, or form. And do you think Casey Thompson played well tonight or not? It was kind of up and down at times. Big passes, couple of interceptions. Let me know in the comments below what you think. I'm very matter-of-fact in this gut reaction because that's how I feel right now. I might have to process this more, watch the game again. Uh, I don't have an overreaction, positive or negative. Obviously, I don't like the loss, but we kept fighting. I don't know. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Go big, Red Nose. Remember, do the bad. This show is brought to you by X Cancer. Join the fight at xcancerstore.com and support your loved ones, your neighbors, and cancer fighters all over the world and help them gain access to revolutionary treatments. xcancerstore.com has a wide variety of t-shirts and merchandise supporting a wide variety of cancer battles so you can show off the colors that matter. Proceeds from each purchase not only help those at home, but also cancer fighters in Tanzania, Africa. Check them out at xcancerstore.com.